like, bro. She got, she got a kid. Look at his back. Oh my god. <laughs> back LVB. Today we're going to be reacting to 10 ways the Ukraine-Russia war could end. And it's crazy because I'm going into the military for some of y'all that don't know. I actually leave in nine days uh, oh, to, go, to go into the infantry. That's one thing we haven't brought up at all. That's why I haven't been in much of the videos. That's why yeah. you know, it's been crazy. That's he's actually... Fine. I'm he's actually now. Yep, he's at my house now before I leave. Yeah, we're gonna pump out as much content as we can with LVB Da Vinci before he gets blown to smithereens. That's crazy. <laughs> in <laughs> Eastern <laughs> Europe. Nothing would. That's crazy. He's not gonna get blown to smithereens. At this point, hopefully, in human history, uh, most of our technology, you're not gonna be fighting like man to man, especially now with countries like Russia and China. Like, yeah, hopefully, bro. Hopefully, we're at the point where they they're like, all right, man, we're gonna suit you up, and they. But even if it did get to that point. You would have to go through at least a year of training before they even send you out there. So you would still have some time before, you know, anything like that would even pops off. But hopefully nothing like that happens, you know. Yeah. I'm going to the infantry. Yeah, until so. like 2025. So. 2025. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, hopefully. Realistically. I'm just, I don't know. Just looking at everything that's going on, man. This is just crazy. No one thought that a modern uh, country is going to invade another one. But, I mean, NATO's inching forward closer and closer to Russia's... Uh, border you know they're just afraid for their uh for their spirit of influence at this point because you know what i mean they kind of wanted to have like a relationship with those uh those past soviet uh countries that used to be a part of their uh, empire so you know now now that those countries are leaving and inching towards the west you got to stand that those those guys in the kremlin again are a little, uh paranoid you know what i mean but uh still doesn't mean it's right for them to invade an entire country and use drones and uh war crimes check i think actually they, they just put a warrant like the uh, the u.n council like they put out an international warrant for putin to come uh, because he that's committed crazy. war crimes so, i don't know all that's crazy bro like everything too when i swore in we had to swear to the president's like co well do his every order and stuff it's like i don't know because he's over here sending like what is it like a hundred billion to yeah. Ukraine and stuff, bro? Yeah, but you can't send a pack of water to Flint. Yeah, but you can't you can't fix a pothole without stressing. Yeah, I think it's the same. I don't know. We'll it's crazy, bro. Know. I've never even seen a Ukrainian, bro. Like it's... Counting the length of the Ukraine Russia war in months, it's time to start thinking about how it might end. So, armed with the knowledge of political science research on that subject. Here are 10 ways Russia's invasion of Ukraine could conclude. Number one, Afghanistan syndrome. No, not the Afghanistan war that the United States recently withdrew itself from. This Afghanistan war against the Soviet Union from the 1980s. Brezhnev invaded to prop up a floundering communist government that could have pivoted westward otherwise. The conflict ultimately became the Soviet Union's version of the Vietnam War. A long fight that lost political support at home and ended with a superpower withdrawing with little to show for their effort. The outcome for the Soviet Union was even worse. The economic turmoil led to Mikhail Gorbachev's rise to power. The United States, led by Congressman Charlie Wilson's efforts, were pleased to provide military assistance to Moscow's opponent. If the trend continues, the war in Ukraine will last for years. Putin will keep enough of his political opponents at bay to survive for a long time. But the war will go nowhere, and Putin's popularity will eventually disappear. Ukraine wins, but at an enormous cost. Number two, Putin removed from office. While public approval numbers for Putin paint him as a popular leader, it is difficult to know exactly how popular he truly is. Autocracies aren't exactly known for eliciting truthful responses from their citizens. As we've discussed before, a popular protest could unexpectedly arise, overwhelm security forces, and storm government buildings. A single unhappy individual with good connections could assassinate him, or a more organized group of disaffected politicians and generals could initiate a coup to remove Putin from office. 
The commonality here is that the new leader would then remove Russian troops from the war and build a fresh regime, free from the burdens of the floundering conflict. Number three, victory day, victory. Circle your calendars now, because this one is coming up. On May 8, 1945, Germany surrendered to end the European portion of World War II. This occurred late at night in Berlin, which therefore made it May 9th in Moscow. The end of World War II was momentous for all the Allies, but the Soviet Union suffered more casualties than any other country during the war. As a result, Victory Day became a major holiday until the fall of the Soviet Union. Under Boris Yeltsin's administration, the celebrations became muted. The country was in the process of eliminating Soviet institutions, and that was one of them. However, the holiday returned since Vladimir Putin came to power, and it is a huge celebration once again. If you have seen photos of the Russian army on parade, it's probably from Victory Day. And one theory is that Putin will wait until May 9th to declare mission accomplished in Ukraine. He will sell the gains made in eastern Ukraine as fulfilling the purpose of the war. This might give Putin a politically convenient way out of the conflict and stop the mounting casualties from ending his rule over the country. I mean, they did, uh, they, they, they put, they made up like this, uh, referendum about like the countries, not the countries, uh, the land that they had taken from Ukraine so far are like now actual states that are a part of Russia now. They recognize those uh, lands that they just conquered as a part of Russia. But it's like, at this point, it's like so contested and it seems like Ukraine is like, um, like they're getting ready for another offensive in the spring or something like that. So we don't see if the Russians can hold on to what they got. I don't know. They just got fresh tanks from the United States. They got fresh tanks from Germany, the United Kingdom. Basically, half of NATO is supporting Supporting Ukraine now. Well, it's, like, we, it's like a spirit bomb. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like a proxy war. They're just man. getting all this, the, the stuff from everybody, man. We're mad. Like, they're getting all these free weapons. Not, not free weapons, but they're getting all these weapons from the United States, all these grounds and shit like that. Um, Russia has faced a lot of military, uh, like military destruction. They haven't faced any like civilian destruction like uh, Ukraine has at this point. Uh, at least not to the same extent, because Ukraine at this point... It's decimated. Like whole cities are gone, destroyed. Like it's just really hard to imagine that there's a war at that scale going on in Europe. It's like something like this hasn't happened since World War Two. You know what I mean? But we won't see where it, where it goes. Yeah. Russian troops might formally withdraw at that point, but the conflict will go back to 2021 levels of intensity. Fewer and unmarked Russians still participating in a Ukrainian civil war. Number four, Putin gambles for resurrection. A May 9th end to the war would require that Putin feel comfortable with what Russia is currently holding on to if it ends active operations. But that might not be enough. A settlement is only as good as a leader's ability to politically survive it. Let's go back to World War I. By the end, it was clear that Germany was very likely to lose and that a settlement would be better for all countries involved. Nevertheless, Germany continued to fight. The problem was that making the appropriate concessions to the United Kingdom and France would have forced the autocratic regime to make democratic concessions at home. Eric Ludendorff, a member of the de facto military dictatorship, described that the hypothetical granting of equal enfranchisement would be worse than a lost war. He subsequently increased his demands against the opponents, despite the German military fading. Ludendorff reasoned that if Germany makes peace without profit, then Germany, or at least his preferred version of Germany, has lost the war. Political scientists call this gambling for resurrection, and it might be at play today with Russia. If Putin is vulnerable politically, something very hard to deduce from the outside, then he may find the war's current progress insufficient to negotiate on. That means a longer war that either ends after Putin can secure a larger swath of territory, or continued Russian military defeats and a political disaster for Putin at home. Number five, 
negotiated settlement. It's also possible that Putin is not facing much domestic pressure at home. After all, from the Russian perspective, this is still a special military operation, and just implementing that without continuing the war to its bitter end. This would give them exactly what they would anticipate receiving if they continued to fight, except the soldiers that might otherwise die in the process would survive instead. As we've discussed before, however, such agreements require consensus on what the eventual outcome would be. If Ukraine thinks the eventual division would look like this, but Russia thinks that the eventual division would look like this, then negotiations won't work yes. out. <laughs> that was wild. It's Number way six, different. Zelensky eliminated. This, at least, was Putin's hope at the start of the war. Reports indicate that a Russian strike team tried to parachute in on Kyiv, storm the presidential compound, and take out Zelensky. In theory, without a head of state to rally around, the rest of Ukraine would have immediately folded. That plot failed, of course, and at this point, a successful attempt would seem unlikely to lead to a quick end to the war in Ukraine. The past couple of months turned a relatively unpopular Ukrainian president into a national political hero. Assassinating Zelensky, arresting him, or whatever, might even backfire now, it as it would only turn yeah. it into a martyr for Ukraine's cause. So perhaps we can scratch that one off the list. But that does not mean that Ukraine can breathe easy, because at number seven, we have the complete military defeat of Ukraine. Oh, how far we have come. Ukraine's military defeat seemed inevitable to many at the beginning of the war. But Russia's poor logistics, especially in the western half of Ukraine, suddenly made the former superpower look very mortal. Still, Russia is learning from its mistakes and has reoriented itself to focus on the east. It's still plausible that the Russian army militarily defeats Ukraine, even if it might take a lot longer than Putin initially thought. The lingering question is what Russia would do next. Was the entire point of the war just to secure ties to the Russian-speaking portions of Ukraine? And the initial attack on Kyiv was simply a feint? Or is Putin willing to pay the cost to administer the entire country over the long term? And that first assault on the capital was not a feint, but a failure. Number eight, Ukraine destroyed. It's also possible that Putin's motivation for the war has nothing to do with Ukraine itself but is rather a renewal of Cold War-era East-West tensions. NATO has drifted westward over time, I and Putin it. might fear that Ukraine joining the fold would give the United States a newfound military no advantage it, versus Russia. Russia. <laughs> Great, these... This is the preventive war motivation for the conflict, which we have previously covered. One way preventive wars end is when the underlying source of the power shift is no longer possible. If Ukraine is no longer capable of arming itself, or becoming a meaningful alliance partner, Russia has no need to continue the war at that point. There is a lot of variation in what this could mean, and those differences are substantial from Ukraine's perspective. An economy in shambles is one thing. The use of low-level nuclear weapons is another. Number nine. They do that. United Does States is going to respond. The Ukraine-Russia war is just a new phase of a civil war that began in 2014. The difference now is that Russia is formally intervening. Interstate wars are notorious for being much, much shorter than civil wars. In fact, your average interstate war lasts less than a year. By contrast, civil wars can drag on forever. Syria's current civil war began during the Arab Spring, all the way back in 2011. This length of fight isn't abnormal either. The civil war between Sri Lanka's government and the Tamil Tigers began in 1983 Tamil and didn't end until 2009. That's a hard enough flag. Civil wars are so bad that ongoing fights just accumulated over time during the Cold War. 
as did the average duration of those wars still ongoing. Pretty much get the gif of it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'll just say this. He was at war see. with himself right now, bro. He didn't want to finish it. I would finish it, but you know, I just... So, so much death and destruction you can yeah. handle. No, and I can pretty much... The last part of the video was, was going to be like... if. If it escalates to World War III and other countries doing like if Russia attacks NATO or NATO attacks Russia, then you know it just starts going to war. Because I feel like if Russia and NATO go to war, China is going to take that opportunity to invade Taiwan, and then the United States going to be like, oh fuck, and then we got to protect mm -hmm. Taiwan. No, United States and China are at war, World War Three. The only way it's going to escalate to that is if Russia, like I said, uses military force against uh, any any NATO country, or if they use nukes on Ukraine. You know, um, and that right now I don't necessarily see them doing that because they still have a pretty solid foothold in the in the uh, occupying uh, regions of Ukraine that they're that they're, that they're in right now. But they was able to bunker down. They got some uh, fortifications of all that. They got like trenches and that they're uh, digging. They're trying to uh, uh, fortify uh, Crimea too because they don't want Ukraine to take back Crimea. You know. Well, we'll see, man. I'm gonna be. I'm I'm not getting sent to know Ukraine. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I doubt it, man. I know they try, and I'm gonna be like honorably discharged. I'm gonna be cool. Yeah, bro. I'm just doing what I, I do. Doubt, I doubt it. Uh, but hit the like button, subscribe, and share, man. We're to 10k. Really appreciate everyone coming back to your channel. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.